Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Walking Dead video. So in this one here, I want to talk about, um, it was like a 10 minute clip, I guess, of a longer podcast, potentially. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, based off of the other podcast lengths, I'm, I'm assuming so. But I saw this video on YouTube and I'm going to leave a link down below so you guys can check out exactly what I'm talking about. But there's a podcast, I guess, that John Bernthal has. It's called Real Ones with John Bernthal. I wasn't aware of this now that I am. I have to watch like every episode because I'm a huge John Bernthal fan. I mean, it was just really incredible watching this. And he had Sarah Wayne Callies on. And they talked about the highs and lows of The Walking Dead. More specifically, they talked about Frank Darabont and what it was like when he was fired and just what happened afterwards and stuff. And it was just really interesting hearing that because obviously we've sort of talked about just the, you know, just in general over the years, we've talked about like, you know, showrunners and just the history of the writers and showrunners that have come and gone and just sort of the, you know, just what has happened with The Walking Dead over the years. And it really is interesting to think about what The Walking Dead would look like if Frank Darabont was still the showrunner. And it's honestly, it is hard to say because I think if Frank Darabont was the showrunner, would a character like Daryl even be as popular as he is today? I don't know if he would have been. You know, Daryl was one of those characters that he he was kind of a background character in seasons one and two. Like, not a background character, but he was definitely a side character, you know? And I do actually wonder if Frank Darabont, you know, if he was still the showrunner just, you know, after five, six, seven seasons, or if he had that many seasons anyways, if a character like Daryl would even still be around. Or which characters would still be around? You know, would he have followed the comic more more closely? And I'm talking about more specifically with like the, with characters' fates because obviously they've always followed the comic in general, like where the stories went and stuff. Certain characters like Carol, you know, died during the prison arc, and like would Carol have died during that during that arc? Right? Would Andrea still be alive to this day? And so again, I'm gonna leave a link down below if you want to go check out the article. But I just wanted to give some thoughts on it because it was kind of interesting. You know, Sarah Wayne Callies seemed to be super upset that Frank Darabont was fired because they believed that he shouldn't have been. And it seemed like John Bernthal, Sarah Wayne Callies, and Jeffrey D. Munn really stood up for him. And they, they were very, very loyal to him. And it seemed like it was just those three. At least judging from what I, what I got from this here, it seemed like it was basically those three there. Because they were talking about how, you know, they really wanted to just sort of stand, you know, stand with Frank Darabont ag against this and just be like, no, you have to bring him back. And they all kind of talked about in here as well, you know, like, or Sarah Wayne Callies, you know, mentions like, you know, maybe if I never would have done that, would I have, I have had another job for a couple more years, you know, just because you know, financially it was scary after the walk that was over. And if I would have had a couple more seasons, you know, that I would have been really well off and that would have been really amazing. And so there is some, you know, potential regret there. But I, I think what I'll say on that is I don't know if that would have been the case, you know, just judging off. I don't know if that would have been the case because the comic, like I, I'll say back then, we had no idea where The Walking Dead was going, right? Like, and you gotta go back to, like, this was, like, you know, before starting Season 2 or, like, during Season 2. We didn't know the heights that it was gonna hit when it hit Season 5, right? And the story that they created then. So, you know, I think, in general, when I look back to that time, I mean, it made sense for those characters to die then, right? Like, it just kind of made sense. Though, I guess you could argue, like, yeah, Shane's character technically died much later he died at herschel's farm whereas in the comic he doesn't die there he dies pretty much in the first i think it's issue number six right he dies pretty much right away in that atlanta camp unless he went to herschel's farm holy crap why can't i remember that right now that should be something i know <laughs> but yeah anyways their characters died you know where their comic characters basically died for the most part right so i look at that and i'm like yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like maybe you could correlate it with like, you know, you guys stood up for Frank Darabont and so you guys were written off the show right away. I don't know about that. You know, I definitely think that's probably what happened with Jeffrey DeMunn. But then again, I think he asked to be off the show, right? It was something like that. I can't remember. But definitely, you know, when I look at it, it, it didn't really seem like Andrew Lincoln was, you know, like fully backing Frank Darabont. Like obviously, he would back him. Obviously, he has so much respect for him. He thinks he's amazing. I'm sure he was heartbroken when he was gone. But I also think that, you know, he thought of his own career and he's like, well, I want to keep doing this, this and that. I you know I, I hope it works out. Maybe he, he showed his support. I have no idea. But obviously, you know, the relationships that he has with Scott Gimple, and, all, and, all, and everyone else since then is obviously amazing. And that's why when I look at the whole Frank Darabont thing, like, there's certain things where I'm like, yeah, you know what? The Walking Dead definitely lost that since then. But we've also had, like, I think better moments, like, without Frank Darabont. So, like, I understand when, when they say things like that. Like, I definitely get it. 
you know, Frank Darabont, and I, I believe that's exactly what they say. Frank Darabont, you know, he is the perfect writer for like humanity and what it really, you know, and you look back to the pilot episode of The Walking Dead, it really felt like, you know, like when, when they saw those zombies or the walkers, it, it really, you could see their emotions there. And just the way that, you know, the dialogue was so good. It was so, so great. There was definitely something there. You know, in terms of just what those characters, or not even just the characters, but just what the story expressed. You know, everyone loves that first season, even the first like season or two. Everyone loves those seasons because it's just something that there is that added element to it. But again, when you go to season four and five, you go to the Terminus arc, you go to, you know, when you get to Red Machete Rick and the, some of the scenes where Rick is saying, like, you know, you're my brother, Daryl, you get to some of the tones there. That was all Scott Gimple. And so, you know, I understand when people say Frank Darabont was so amazing. And, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that I, I'm sure I'm not aware of when it comes to some of the stuff with AMC and Frank Darabont. I know there was that lawsuit. I believe it's settled now and stuff. I used to know some more stuff about that, but I just honestly kind of just tuned it out. It's um, it's just one of those things where I, I look at it and it's like, yeah, you know, I think it does kind of suck. But there's also like really great writers and there's been some really great stories since then. I don't think The Walking Dead lost anything once Frank Darabont left. I think it got a lot more with Scott Gimple, to be honest, because if you look at season four and five, that was honestly one of my favorite stories of all time. Like season four and five was just, it was so great there. Like when all the characters were split up and they were all trying to find each other, they were walking on the railroad tracks. And then, you know, the encounter there when Rick, Daryl, and, and some of the claimers got into that big fight, Rick ripped Joe the claimers throat out. And it was just like some of the darkest shit ever. And then later on, even with Terminus, you know, you get to the stuff with like Red Machete Rick inside that church. It was just so badass. Like there was just some really, really incredible moments. And even you look at the stuff with Negan, right? Anything that we got with that character that was all scott gimple and it was all you know hiring uh jeffrey dean morgan and so i just i look at it as you know i think the frank darabont thing it's unfortunate but they've done some really amazing things since then and i i uh yeah i just it was really interesting seeing this thing again i was i just watched it and i was like man i have to get some thoughts on this because it was just it's just crazy to see from their point of view because yeah i mean i guess they've been off the show for such a long time now i mean john bernthal left the show like what 10 years ago if not more like it was a long time ago and Sarah Wayne Callies was like the year after that, so maybe nine, ten years ago now. So they were only on the show for a couple of years. And it's weird to think that from their perspective. I mean, it's so crazy to think about it. Like, John Bernthal was on the show for literally six, or tw I mean, six, uh, 12 episodes, right? I mean, he's shown up here and there, like cameos and nothing, two episodes. But it is really crazy to think about. Like, they really didn't have that big of a, a part in the show. But obviously their characters and their performances just had such a big impact that like they do have a big part in the show because, you know, they were the, the original characters. And yeah, I don't know. I, I just I don't think there's really any controversy here anymore. You know, I think with the Frank Darabont stuff, I think it's just sort of it is what it is now. Again, if Frank Darabont was the showrunner to this day, would would things be different? Like, I think things would be different. Would The Walking Dead be better? I don't know about that. Honestly, I, I don't really know about that. Like, I, like people just really look at how good season one and two are, but I think they forget how good seasons four and five were. And not even that, also, like, season six as well. Season six was also really incredible. And then we got Angela Kang in season nine, and I know there's been some issues with season 10 and season 11. This and that, people like to bring some stuff up. There's those bonus episodes, whatever. But, like, season nine was a very phenomenal season. You know, Rick's final episodes... You get the Whisper of Pike scene there at the end. We've gotten some really incredible stories. And that's why, weirdly, when I look back at it now, when I, you know, just like with hindsight, when I look back and I think, who is my favorite showrunner out of all of, like, everyone? I kind of have to go with Scott Gimple. Like, it's so weird to say because I just, I wasn't a fan of him in season eight after he killed off Carl. I was so pissed off. But I look back at it all and I'm like, you know what? He really understands The Walking Dead so well. He understands Rick's character well, you know, specifically. And you go back to season four and five and just how good it was then. That was all him. You know, like it was Scott Gimple. He did such an incredible job. That's why he was the showrunner for so long, right? Then he kind of lost his way a little bit, I think, <laughs> during season seven and eight. But, you know, he still has that in him, obviously. He's written some really, really phenomenal episodes. He wrote Rick's final episode. I think he might have wrote, wrote it with Angela Kang, but he wrote that episode. So it's like 
he can write amazing stories. That is there. It's just that some of the things, you know, with season seven and eight stretching out all out war, again, I think you're going to screw up sometimes. But I think if you look at his overall record, he, he's a really phenomenal showrunner. And I, I just think that, yeah, with Frank Darabont, it does suck what happened. But I think for fans, I think we can all be thankful for also, you know, what did happen with season four and five and what Gimple did. Anyways, I'm going to leave a link down below. It was really interesting because, I mean, obviously, like, I, I do understand just sort of where they're coming from with this. Like, it's maybe if they would have had more people sort of standing, you know, behind them, then maybe things could have changed. You know, maybe he would have been rehired or, or something like that. But there was obviously, like, I don't know. I don't want to have to get into all that again. But it, it's, a, it's a really interesting watch. I really recommend going to check it out. Like, definitely go check it out. But yeah, I'm going to leave it here. Post all your thoughts down below. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.